Hey, Edith. Hey, Christy. What did the farmer give his wife on New Year's Eve? I don't know. Hogs and kisses. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. What happened to the man who thought about the evils of drinking in the new year? What? He gave up thinking. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down Tulips. Happy New Year! Oh, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, everyone who's listening. Yeah, if you've been sticking with us since July, we're so grateful. If by chance, you this is your very first time, well, better late than never. Oh, yeah, we're <laughs> glad you're here. We're yeah. so glad you're here. Happy New Year to you. Today, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about our top 10 favorite mistakes, mm-hmm. which... I have a lot. I had trouble narrowing it down to five. I Actually, I did, too, to tell you the truth. And we're going to also talk about our top ten favorite victories. Yeah, things that really made us happy in the garden. So the whole thing kind of balances out. And we're, like, humming along in neutral. Right. (laughs) And and right now, um, Edith and I are sipping some tea in our upside-down tulips mugs. We really are. Listen to this. Did you hear that? That is us slurping. And what is that you're wearing over there, Edith? What? That, tell me what? about your cool t-shirt. Oh my gosh. It's an upside down tulips t-shirt, Christy. Hey, I have, I'm wearing one too. So are you. Oh, I love the colors. If you want to look as cool as we do, just go to our website, folks, at UpsideDownTulips.com and you can get mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, totes, journals, iPhone covers, masks. Yeah. And and stick, sticker. Did you say stickers? I did not say stickers. Because who... Stickers are great, you guys. You can put stickers. Yes, they're wonderful. You, yeah. It's, you know, it's your way of sort of making your own graffiti on something. Yes. It's on branding something. Yeah, but don't that, brand like the neighbor with our stickers. Don't like, you know, go put it on their garage. That, no, that's not good. Oh, I thought you meant like put it on their face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that too. Don't that put too. it on anybody's face. Don't stick anybody's face. Yeah. Maybe you could use a sticker as a mask if you're not going to be talkative that day. <laughs> right? That's true. Uh, and people were wondering, what the heck are we going to talk about gardening in January? Oh. I get asked that question all the time. Don't you, Edith? Mm-hmm. So you guys taking a break? Or what are you guys going to do in January? Are you going to run reruns? And Edith and I talked about it, and we said, no, we're not going to take a break. We're not going to do reruns. We think there's a lot of gardening to talk about in January. There's all kinds of stuff that we've mentioned along the way that we have not fleshed out that we can do in January. Like right now, Christy, I am, I can't wait to garden again, to tell you the truth. So what am I thinking about? Thinking about seeds. Yes. All the seed planting, seed catalogs, Mm -hmm. seed companies, new seeds we want to try. We're going to do a whole episode on our plans for the 2021 garden and what seeds we're going to be getting and dreaming about. And why the seeds that we here in Colorado are using may not suit you where you live. So we're going to get really specific. I'm excited about that. Mm, Me too. We're also going to talk about winter sowing. Oh, Christy, that's your your thing. You are so good at that. We have a whole episode planned just to teach people how you can, I kid you not, sow seeds in the winter that will germinate when they're good and ready in March and April. And you will save a ton of money. Not only that, but they will germinate. Like usually I'm too late planting stuff, putting seeds in because I worry. But if they do it on their own when you winter sow, they know what's right. So you have a head start on every other gardener. And and they're happy because they don't need to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you have to harden them off? They don't have to be hardened off. They're They're already 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 outside. Yep. Also, stay tuned for that episode. And then, of course, we're going to talk about gardening from the ground up. 
Yes, maybe if you have never had a garden before and want to have one this summer, we're going to start with 101. Like, what is the first thing that you do? What if you just have a plot of land or a container? Mm -hmm. What do you start with? What do you do? Exactly. Soil prep, right? All this, how to sow seeds, all this exciting stuff. Yeah. So lots of stuff to happen. And even before we hit spring. Yeah, because the, 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 a lot of the success is in the planning. Mm. And I really did learn that last year when I didn't plan that well. You know, I didn't know we were going to have a podcast or my garden would have been better. Right? <laughs> July was a little late to fix stuff, you know. Yeah, now the pressure is really on this year. Either. Yeah, oh, it's really on. I oh, know. my goodness. Uh, so stay tuned for all these great episodes. And of course, you know, we're always going to have more of these fun fake commercials and our little pod plays. We're going to keep writing those. Because gardeners, they need their own sense of, they have their own sense of humor. Mm -hmm. We write for you so to, give, for, to give you some laughs. Yeah. Uh, so anything, do you have a garden update? I'll tell you what my garden update is. What's yours? Nothing. I well, got nothing for garden update. I actually have one and you're part of it. So do you remember, oh, when was it? Maybe a month or so ago, one of our episodes, you were telling me how you could not stand honeydew melon. You really don't like it. And I said. Yes. I do. I remember okay. that Christy, greatly. Christy, I brought a sample because I know you don't like it and you don't have to like it. What I'm looking for, I harvested this in, what was it, September 5th, that frost. Uh-huh. And it, this this is it. This is what I want to try it because I, I want to see if the honeydew melon, because maybe I've just been eating crappy honeydew melon. What I time. want you to think about even if you don't like the taste, is the fact that how many months later, September, October, November, okay, over three, three and a half months later, this has been sitting in my house, and I want wow. you to taste it how for, am the, I gonna reach for it? the freshness. Can you throw it at me? No. Oh Hang on. Oh. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. sorry, we're six feet apart, everyone, and so this is, I this got is, short arms. I think it's cool to have a garden update of something you harvested in September, and you're eating it late December. She's chewing. She Her mm -hmm. eyeballs are straight up. And she's thinking, what do I say? Do I lie? No, I, I wanted to finish eating. And I want to say it's it's not bad. I don't hate it. Okay. But, I mean, talk about the freshness it's, of exactly. it. Exactly. I'm impressed that you harvested this in September and yeah. you still have this. I'm going to have another, another bite here. You know what's nice about it is that it's not that hard, crunchy stuff you get in terrible fruit cups that you buy mm -hmm. at the airport. What's nice about it, too, is that it's organic and nutritious, and it just sat in my house, and we're eating yeah. fresh fruit I don't December. hate it. Well, I guess that's the most I can expect, <laughs> so I'll yeah. take it. The texture's, the texture's better, so it's good. good. Okay, good. Um, do you want to hear is, is some old Lang Syne trivia since it's New Year's Eve? Coming up? Oh, that's right. Well, can I can I first tell you what my New Year's resolution is? Yes. My New Year's resolution is to help all my friends gain 10 pounds so I look skinnier. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're doing to me. I knew it. <laughs> Not with Keep a baking melon. <laughs> all this bread offering me. I'm going to make bread, Christy. Do you want some? I said, no, Edith, really. We're trying to cut back on carbs. Oh, so you don't like me? You don't like my bread? And then this I said, yes, the person, Edith, we ladies, want your bread. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the person... <laughs> that gave me hot, delicious, homemade eggnog yesterday, right? Yes. So it was <laughs> worth every of the thousands of calories that it had, I'm quite sure. <laughs> so here is Christy's Trivia Corner. Did you know, Edith, that Old Lang Syne is much older than any other popular song we sing during the holidays? Hmm. It dates back to 1788. Oh, do you know who, who wrote it? No. The great Scottish poet Robert Burns. You're kidding. Wow. And actually, it is one of more than 600 ancient Scottish folk tunes that Robert Burns published to preserve the oral traditions of the Scottish people. Oh, I had no idea. Do you know what Old Lang Syne means? Old times or good times? Very close. It means for the sake of old times. Oh, Mm -hmm. So, Burns didn't mean that we should forget old acquaintances. Actually, what it means is that it's preserving old friendships and looking back over the events for the year. So, if you do forget old acquaintances, you can look back on the year and remember them. 
That's very nice. And after Burns died, George Thompson published it and set it to the tune of Sir Alexander's Don Strathsby. And Strathsby is a type of dance. And that's the melody used today. No kidding. Wow. And you know, it wasn't made popular until the great Guy Lombardi started playing it in 1929. Is he the one with the bouncing balloon ball on on the TV? Was that Guy Lombardi? Oh, that's very interesting. I was thinking that might be Sing Along with Mitch. That I'm, you're right. There was no Mitch Lombardi. No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> but Guy Lombardi, as far as when I grew up, he was Mr. New Year's Eve. Okay. And he, he would play um, just as the clock struck midnight. The song "Old Lang Syne." is very popular in Southeast Asia. Huh. And Japanese department stores use it to let customers know they're closing for the day. Oh. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Okay. The segue I was using was on New Year's Eve. That's how this joke starts. Okay. okay? And it's more than a one-liner. Okay. On New Year's Eve, Marilyn stood in the local pub and said it was time to get ready. At the stroke of midnight, she wanted every husband to be standing next to to the one person who made his life worth living. As the clock struck, the bartender was almost crushed to death. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Well, folks, if you ever hear words or terms you're not familiar with or you want a good laugh, check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website. And if you want to see pictures of our gardens, well, we don't really have a lot of pictures happening right now, but no. pictures from last year. Mm -hmm. We also have inspirations and gardening jokes. Visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Thank you. It's that time of year when normally we look back on the year that's gone by with some nostalgia, maybe writing some top ten lists that leave us misty-eyed, and making resolutions that give us hope for the new year. That was then. This is now. I think at this point we have a lot more curmudgeons than we had at the beginning of 2020, and that includes me and Christy. Here is our curmudgeons goodbye to 2020. I'm not saying I hate you, 2020. What I'm saying is that you are literally the Monday of my life every day for about 300 days. I would get up in the morning, look at myself in the mirror, and think, this can't be accurate. I'm somewhere that people are crowded together but won't wear masks. I have to tell myself, it's just not worth the jail time. I think I seized the wrong friggin' day. I have deja vu, the feeling I've experienced this bull before. I thought I was in a bad mood, but it's been a year, so I guess this is who I am now. Tomorrow is another day, and it could be even worse than this one. I'd be a terrible superhero. I'd see the signal calling me from the sky, and I'd be like, I literally just sat down. Your hopes and dreams are not dashed to pieces. They're merely postponed for a really, really long time. And finally, I may not be that good looking, or sexy, or athletic, or funny, or smart, or talented. I, I, I forgot where I was going with this. If you've been listening a while, you know we're not going to leave it on that note. We're gardeners, so we're always hopeful that the next year, the next garden, the next episode will be better than the one before. So grab a plot of land, a container, or a pot, and grow something. Unlike how we feel about 2020, your garden will reward you, nourish you, and forgive you if you make a mistake. We're ready for you, 2021. Bring it! We're back. Hello. Hi, Christy over there. Hey, you know what I just realized I said? What? I said Guy Lombardi. It's not Guy Lombardi? No, it's Guy Lombardo. Oh, okay. I'm Lombardi you... is, is, the, is the football is... coach. Oh, of course. <laughs> right? And we both love football. Right. That's right. Lombardi is. <laughs> oh, good good one. Good Guy save, Guy Lombardo. Christy. Okay. Um, so now we're at the point. We've mm -hmm. kind of come full circle. We started this podcast. Yep, talking about our top favorite gardening mistakes. Yeah. 
This is the podcast that celebrates mistakes. And now these are our mistakes for the year 2020 in the garden. In the garden. We've always said, you know, (laughs) we're not professionals. We're not experts. We're not. We're learning all the time. Gardens keep you humble. Yeah. And I have to say, I was a bit humbled this year because sometimes something that worked perfectly all for years, all of a sudden, it does. This year, Christy, my cauliflower never fruited. I had the most beautiful cauliflower last year. And my broccoli seedlings, they went to seed when they were like four inches tall. So you never got any. I never got. And I saw you had broccoli. Yes. Well. And cauliflower. Beautiful cauliflower this year. Yeah. Oh, I can. And, and remember, you, you, you put the leaves over it and it was yes. like. Yes. That was a great tip to put the leaves over it to prevent it from yellowing. You know what I. So every year I move where, where you know, like on, on a big clock. So if last year my crucifers, that's what we call our broccoli and our cauliflower, if they were at 6 o'clock, then I move them next year to 9 o'clock. Crop rotation. Crop rotation. So I put them in a place, I think, where I did not amend the soil enough. Oh. I don't think they got enough fertilizer. Uh, And I can certainly take care of that next year. And I also think that it got too hot too soon. Mm-hmm. They that, don't like. That's probably why it flowered. Yeah, they they don't like that, and which means also my part in that was I didn't put them out soon enough. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So that was one mistake. And how how much sooner would you have put them in? Maybe when, two weeks might have made it. And difference. when did you put them in? Mm, I think I waited until like. Maybe late April. Yeah, I that was may, yeah. way too late. It got really warm in late April this year. Yeah, it was shockingly warm. So, so we have to, um, you know, there's always going to be a couple of things like that that happen. Yeah, you want to give one of yeah. yours. It's weird too. I was just going to say this is like we we both became unemployed because of COVID mm-hmm. because our industry, the theater, was shut down, mm-hmm. and so we had all of a sudden as very busy theater makers that we were, all of a sudden we had all this time. And I thought this would have been the best garden I ever had in my life. And it was okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, I kind of like, why wasn't it just a little better? But it was, it was fine. I'm going to start off with, I think, the my most notorious gardening mistake was. Mm-hmm. It's, it's somewhat of a 2019, but it bled into 2020, which is that I had five huge boxes of tomatoes that I put in the attic <laughs> that were green. I was going to let them ripen, mm. and I forgot about them, and they turned into mummified little pieces of mold. Yeah, yeah. And I did it a little better this fall, but that was a huge mistake that, well, what a waste. You know, what a waste of all those tomatoes. I, yeah, well, you know, that's okay. You were busy the, at that time. That's right. Right, you were busy. Yeah. So, And I still have tomatoes in the attic right now, but I think they're okay. I should go up there and check them today. How often do you check them? I checked them about maybe two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I did it again, everybody. Two weeks ago? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it depends on the kind of tomato it is. Right. The kind that I have, they will literally go red, solid red, in two days if I'm not looking at them. Ever. And oh. then they start to rot rather quick. That's the black crim. Okay. They, they go fast. Well, I'll go t- we'll check them after this. Okay. We'll what else you got? This. Um, okay. And, oh, I just wanted to point out that also for my uh, broccoli and cauliflower next year, I'm going to water more. I'm going to mulch more to keep the, the mm. soil cooler. Mm-hmm. And I might think about using row covers. Oh, yeah. Do you remember how you said that you had a, you put a chair over a patch of lettuce? Yes. Anything like that would have helped. So that's what I'm going to do next year. So my other thing was... I planted butternut squash, and the reason I think that I only got two and they were rather small is I put them in the wrong location. I put them halfway under the uh, plum tree. It's actually probably where I should have put the crucifers. Oh. So they never got the absolute amount of sun that they needed. Mm. I was hoping that they would, like, shoot out from under Uh and travel away, but I don't think they had enough energy to do that. Oh, so, well, I got two, so, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain too much, but. (laughs) Well, my next one is I did not mulch the vegetable garden soon enough. 
I planted everything in. Yeah. And everything was going fine. And I was thinking, I need to get, get out there and mulch. I need to get out there and mulch. And this was around May. And we had this really hard, hard rainstorm. Remember that where we got two inches of rain yes. in a half an hour? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I took pictures of it. And then what happened is all that rain in the soil splashed up on my tomato plants. And I think that's why I got some problems with my tomato plant this year. If I had just mulched sooner. Oh. oh. So this year I'm going to mulch. As soon as I put things in, I'm going to mulch them. Okay. That sounds like a really good idea. Good, good. Um. My next one was really disappointing. It was my potatoes in a barrel. <laughs> oh, I know. And I mean, your potato. Might be clear. Your okay. potato. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other ones were maybe two potato ets, we could call them. They Potatinis. Were the, Potatinis. They were the size <laughs> of a quarter. And I had been so looking forward to that. You know, I looked up recipes. Potatots. Potatots. <laughs> yeah. They were um, so... I did have get one meal out of them, and they were absolutely delicious, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that again. All that work. Huh? All that work. Yeah. All that hoping, waiting and hoping. My other uh, mistake was that I never put down my drip hoses in the vegetable garden this year. And usually I do it because I'm very busy, and I'll go away for a couple of weeks to direct a show, and the drip hoses would just go off every morning and water it. Yeah. And I thought, because of COVID, I don't need to do that. But what it did was that it made me have to go out regardless every day yeah. and water for 45 minutes. And I just don't know if that was always the best use of my time. And sometimes you just want to let the drip hose do it for you. Mm. So I'm going to make sure no matter what happens this summer, I'm going to put up my drip hoses. Well, may I speak to that, Christy? Because I'm, I think the reason for, for me never using a, a drip hose is that when you go out, when I go out there every day, I can keep check on Japanese beetles. I can keep check sure. on aphids. So I can still go check on things. I just don't have to go oh. out there. And then there's also a, a risk of splash. So you mean back. it's not an all or nothing situation? <laughs> it's not an all or nothing. Or nothing. No. Okay. Just to have the backup. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Oh my gosh. My next mistake has been three years in the making. I have had raspberries for, I would say, maybe 12, 15 years, a patch of raspberries. I used to get enough. Yes, they're beautiful. And I used to get enough to make like five jars of jam. Yeah. Three years ago, they I'd go out there and they had, had fallen over. And like they had that little them. white, their, the, your leaves curled up, right? And that, yes, yeah. Well, I thought, this will fix itself. I don't know why I thought that. I didn't do anything about it. That year, still got a decent number. Second year was worse. This year, I got less raspberries than I did potatoes. Oh, no. And oh, I, I called the extension, the CSU extension. Uh -huh. I went to a nursery. That's Colorado State the, University mm -hmm. extension. Most universities, state universities, mm -hmm. have agricultural extensions. And one somebody suggested, or I did some research, that I might have a kind of a worm in there, a white maggot worm. And I cut one of my raspberries and I saw the worm. And they are at this minute in the ground because I missed the time. I should have taken oh. the raspberry canes out, but then it snowed. Yeah. So the next day, next time we have a nice day and there's no snow, they are coming out and they're going in the garbage, not in the compost. Not in the compost because... Then you'll get that mm -hmm. worm or, or does any disease plant should go in the garbage. Yeah, yeah and then I'm going to plant squash because the worms probably won't like squash. And that's a good location. That's nice and sunny in that part oh, of the yard. Oh, that's so hot yeah. and sunny. Yeah. Well, I put the wrong cages on my, some of my tomatoes. I have some that are shorter and some that are taller. And I researched the tomatoes to figure out this one's a taller one, this one's a shorter one. And I thought I was so careful. And so here I had this huge persimmon that was probably – six feet tall oh, wow. on a little four foot cage. It was flopping over, <laughs> oh. breaking under the weight of it. And then I had this tiny little tomato that was maybe went up to my knee in a six foot cage. <laughs> Sometimes there's no way you can tell. You know, it's almost like plants are individuals and they will do what they want. Here's to next year picking the right cage. Yeah. I have this a sort of annual patch of parsley. Uh, yeah. 
that will kind of stay semi green throughout the year or it'll green up the next year. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of climate change and global warming. It doesn't fully die or the, the, it reseeds itself. Mine too, mine too, Christy. And, you know, I'm just kicking myself that I never really gave it a good harvest to dry the leaves. Because oh. I'll use those leaves all winter long. And over uh, Thanksgiving, I realized as I was finishing up dishes mm -hmm. that I was using the last of my parsley leaves. I never, it was just well, all. What do they look like now? We haven't had a deep, hard, hard, hard freeze. It's, they're yellow. They're yellow now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I regret that. I have parsley regret. Oh. <laughs> if I have to buy parsley, you know oh, how I that's going to kill me? Oh, that oh, will kill me, That's too. like buying a zucchini. Buy like, I'm not going to, I don't care if it's January, I'm not buying a yeah, zucchini. I'm not buying a zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> If you're just joining us, this is Christy and Edith. We were supposed to provide commentary at the 131st Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California. But it was canceled due to COVID. Boo! So instead, we are at the third and a half Tournament of Rosé Parade in Pueblo, Colorado. Every new year at the Tournament of Roses Parade, viewers experience the beauty of the floral floats along with the spirited marching bands and the high-stepping equestrian units. The Tournament of Rosé Parade has many of the same features, except everyone is slightly snookered on rosé wine. And instead of a football game, everyone gathers at the Pueblo Putt-Putt for a couple rounds of mini-golf. Pueblo is the place to be this morning. Uh-huh. Say, Christy, why is it the third and a half tournament of Rosé Parade? Because last year, someone put the mounted color guard of Alamosa behind the Hey Hey, We're the Farmers float, <gasps> oh. made entirely out of freshly cut hay. Oh. The horses chased the Hey Hey float, which ran into the majorettes of Mineral County and their twirling torches. Oh, no. I hope everyone was all right. Uh-huh. Oh, look. Here comes the first float. It's the Rose Rosé float, of course, sponsored by Primrose Rosé Wine. This float is made entirely of rose bushes and wine bottles. It took volunteers over 200 hours of gardening and drinking. Yes way, Rosé. Hey, I see a band. Out of Mupper Corner, Colorado, it's the Vegetable Marching Band playing vegetable music using instruments made entirely from fresh vegetables, such as carrots, celery, peppers, squash, and zucchini. They are literally playing with their food. <laughs> oh, they sure have good taste in music. And here come the horses. Out of Wild Horse, Colorado, it's the Spirit of the West Riders, a group of men and women who have a passion for wild horses and their history. Today, they are riding wild mustangs. Oh no! <gasps> Whose idea was it to put wild horses behind all those delicious and musical vegetables? The horses are running into the vegetable marching band, and the spirit of the West Riders have been thrown off! And the vegetable marching band has run onto the rose rose float, stomping on all the rose bushes and breaking the wine bottles. The slightly snookered gardeners are slipping on the horse manure. What a mess. Looks like the Tournament of Rosé Parade has been canceled again. Ah, oh, well. May I top off your glass of rosé? Well, if you insist. Happy New Year. So, Christy, why don't you start with victory, since I started with our disappointments. Our, yes. Well, one of my favorite victories is the Chinese asters that I planted this year. Oh, they were beautiful, Christy. They are an annual that I winter sowed two years ago, and then this, they just reseeded themselves, and they were just fantastic. They were big and tall and bloomed, and I collected a bunch of seed heads from them. I'm gonna have a. I'm. I think I'm never not gonna have Chinese asters in my yard because of it. It was just they were just. And they bloomed in the end of July, early August. When other things are not blooming, other things have fried. Blue and mm. pink and yellow and happy. And the bees loved it and the butterflies loved it. And Oh, nice. Well, this year I had the best cucumbers I've ever had. They were two different brands. They were Market Moor and Straight Eight. I planted them on um, 
my hugel kultur, my little hills that I build, I put cages on them so they could go up. If you want to know about hugel kultur, folks, just go to our episode about how we garden. Mm-hmm. And it's also a definition of it on our upside down dictionary, but it's how I garden and I, for a lot of my things. Also, the two hills are the closest thing to the um, compost of any of the other things. And I think that that soil there is so rich. So I had oh, nice. just so many wonderful, wonderful cucumbers. That's great. I love cucumbers. Mm-hmm. Mm. I had a very successful year deadheading and weeding. I think it's because I had the extra time because I was unemployed. Yeah. yeah. But I really stayed on top of my deadheading of my flowers. So therefore, when I was dead, therefore in July and August, I got, September, I got a second flush of everything. Oh, nice. Second flush of of lavender, of Jupiter's beard. Um, it was just absolutely beautiful all summer long. You know, I did not deadhead my uh, lavender. That just reminded me. Although I moved some of it, I moved four of them, and three of them took. That's also one of my victories this year. Yeah? Is that I had a lavender that I winter sowed. So I grew this from seed oh people. Oh, my goodness. English lavender, not French lavender. French lavender is very difficult. Oh, that's what but I have. Really? I a French? So. I don't know. That's impressive. I don't know. Maybe I should. Don't be impressed until you look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm, you know, I just make stuff up sometimes. And... What did this lavender do? But it reseeded itself. No. So it had little babies around it. So yeah. well, mine I, does that. Too. I picked up the little babies yeah. and I moved them, about four of them, to the other side because I think that so they're just lavender is just so great to have in the yard. And they took, they stayed. And I will see what happens in the spring, but I count that as a victory because they oh, that grew is a, and they bloomed. And that is a big victory. And I will check out mine because mine were old and woody when I moved them. And I did research on it, and they said, don't move them. Talk to them and see what their accent is. I don't know why I didn't think of that, <laughs> and I will do that. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Uh, the other success was um, I planted some things that I have never planted before, varieties, and how much I love doing that. I had no idea how much I loved it. For example, um, the cantaloupe that I, I've never been able to grow a cantaloupe. This year, I had cantaloupe. They were from... Livingston Seeds. I think that they're from Massachusetts. And they were absolutely wonderful. That's impressive. And if it hadn't snowed and gotten so cold on September 5th, I would have had a lot more. Because oh, remember man. how warm it got after that? Yes. Yeah, Yeah. it was in the 70s. It's the 60s and 70s yeah. after that September snow. Mm-hmm. What a weird weather we had. And then it went back to the 80s, almost 90s in October. Yeah. Remember? Mm. I grew the most perfect zucchini plant of my life this year. Really? And this is why it was perfect. Because you know how when it gets to August, the zucchini plant has taken over half your yard? Yeah. This zucchini plant was never more than six feet oh. in diameter. Oh. It was such a great size. And zucchinis can give you, you know, two or three zucchinis a day. Oh, I've yeah? been in that situation where one plant is giving you that many uh -huh. and you're putting it in your neighbor's mailboxes. This zucchini gave me one every three or four days. Was this a different variety that you never had used I, before? I hadn't used it before, and I winter sowed it too, and it was just lovely. Do you remember what variety it was? Um, no, <laughs> I don't. I'll find out. Find out. And I'll tell you. I'll tell everybody because next week. Because people with smaller gardens are going to want to know. It was just great. My zucchini. One year, my zucchini. I'm not exaggerating. 20 feet, not just in one direction. It literally took yeah. over the garden. I'm cool. This was yeah. a well-behaved zucchini yeah. with, with just nice, constant production that yeah. was not overwhelming. So you're not like Lucy and Ethel I, <laughs> with zucchini. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, and chocolate. I would love to know what variety that was, Christy. Speaking of variety of things, this is the first year that I did some container gardening on my porch and ate, because I, I do have a garden, but I thought, why not? I'll see if it works. And it did. I grew something called um, uh, baby romaine. And I had it on my porch, which 
You can easily move if it gets too hot. I could move it in the shade. That's so perfect. And it grew to be about, it was a baby. So it was like, how big is this? Four or five inches? Yeah. I'm holding my fingers apart. And it was delicious. And I look upon that, and I also had some in the garden that I transplanted. And that's good for people who don't have, you don't have, again, we just say you don't have to have a plot of land. Mm-hmm. No, you oh, don't. You, you can have a bucket that's and a right. porch. A bucket that you drill some holes in so it has some, you know, drainage. And there you go with your fresh vegetables. Because if you find something like this baby romaine, this what you can also do replantings. Every time you pick one out, you can plant another one in. That's wonderful. Yeah. I have another, I have a weird victory. Uh, uh, why am I not surprised? We talked about our garden mistakes in July. And I said one of my mistakes was that I just wasn't stretched out enough. And I was always getting very sore after gardening. My back, my knees. Uh-huh, yeah. But because of COVID, I've been doing yoga every day. Yeah. And I, and I tell you this, I have not, I've been out in the yard. I was out in the yard all summer. And I never had a day where I was I would I was sore the next day. That's a wonderful victory. Maybe also because I've been walking more too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like oh, that's good. I can get down on my knees. I can touch my toes. I can reach up for stuff. And you know, let's be honest. There's a lot of squatting in gardening. Yeah, there is. Mm-hmm. Not a, not always very pretty. A lot of up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, yeah. showing your butt. I do that when I'm. You do the, that on purpose, though. I mean, you know, when I'm in the front, when I'm in the front yard, and I'm bending over, and I know my butt is just facing the street, <laughs> and some car is going by, and I just like enjoy the view, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christy, that's me. Well, my other, um, I feel that my new variety of spinach, and I've talked about this before, my Vero Flay. yes, my gigantic giant spinach, spinach, that was a success. Unfortunately, I didn't get any seeds from it. Oh. I still have two out there that are still kind of alive. I'm going to get that because you know what I thought was interesting about that spinach is that I bet it would make a great wrap. Oh, a great wrap. And so if you want to make a sandwich wrap but you don't want to use bread, I'll tell you where to get them. It's Botanical Interests, the seed company from Broomfield, Colorado. God bless Botanical mm-hmm. Interests. They are mm-hmm. my favorite seed company. And also, I think the packages are beautiful. They the are artwork. They're gorgeous. Yeah, they're they're. Like, that, I would buy if they, if they were. I wonder if they probably do sell this. But if they were to sell those pictures, yeah, I would buy some of them. Would they be cute in like a little triptych or like mm-hmm. a little they would be. of? Mm-hmm. They're just actually beautiful, really, really nice, and great information on the inside of that packet. Yeah, you need a magnifying glass. But they, the, yeah, <laughs> it's like a lesson. It's like a yeah. lesson in there. <laughs> uh, okay, do you have another? Um, that's that's my victory list. I have one more victory. So do it. My marvel of Four Seasons lettuce that seeded itself, that gave me lettuce for months and months, and it was ready to eat before other parts of the garden because it seeded itself oh, or anywhere near ready. That's was, a great victory. It was my favorite thing, another seed that I got from Botanical Interests. And what's nice about being able to have lettuce in your garden is that when you get it in the grocery store, the clock is ticking on it. Yeah. You don't even know how long it's been there. You know, How many some, times have you bought a lettuce mix from the grocery store mm-hmm. and you get it home and you put it in the refrigerator and maybe you don't get to it for a couple of days? Slime. It's gone. Slime. It's turned into slime. But yeah. this way, it's always out there. It's fresh. You know what it's like. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also one of those things that you could grow in a container because you don't have it. You can eat it as a baby when it's baby lettuce. I mean, yeah. they sell that at the Better. store for yeah. so much money. <laughs> you know, a seed packet is like less than $4. And they sometimes come with hundreds of seeds. Yes, that you can use again and again. And then the plant will make its own seeds. Yeah. It's a win-win. Yeah. Well, that's some good victories this year. Yeah. We have had good victories. What is it going to be like next year? I don't know. And it just wouldn't be an episode of Upside Down Tulips without your favorite, my favorite, mailbag. Ring, ring. Today, our mailbag is a little bit different. This is an article given to me by one of our listeners and one of my friends, Marcia, from Lakewood. It was in the September 17th, 2020 issue of the Wall Street Journal, of all things. And the the title of the article is Gardeners Throw in the Trowel. (laughs) So 
So literally. See, puns, you can never have too many. People love puns. You keep telling me that. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, we're not the only ones that had, you know, disappointments, failures. That's what this whole article is about. So I'll just start reading it, okay? Yeah, here we go. Thousands of quarantined Americans planted vegetables last spring, striking a blow for hope, just as their World War II era forebears did with the home front victory gardens. Another thing, cool thing about gardening, it links us, right? Yes. To other generations. Oh, I love that. I love that too. Okay, so linking. Um, six months later, and this is six months after planting, many are admitting defeat. My tomatoes look like a Dr. Seuss plant, <laughs> says Donnie Chamberlain, a 64-year-old blogger in Redding, California. It might not have helped that I planted them in a kiddie pool. He planted him in a kitty pool. That would work as long as you have drainage, right? Yes. I have a feeling he probably didn't oh. have drainage would be my feeling. Uh, she netted three small tomatoes. I had the best of intentions. She said, I could admit that I failed. Another first time gardener said this in explaining her victory garden was a bust. It's just embarrassing, she said. Everything looks dead. They tended the garden daily, included in the cold Michigan spring as they planted seeds in cardboard boxes in the family room. Her children named green bean plants after characters from The Office. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> With Jim Halpert as the tallest, Pam Beasley as the one leaning towards Jim. Aww. Aww. And Andy Bernard, the, the nard dog, doing his <laughs> own thing in the garden. It's amazing what you, how a garden can make you also yeah. bond with the kids and give them memories. And I named my tomato plants after the characters in the Brady Bunch this year. That's right, you did. <laughs> I'm going to start naming mine too. I don't know. It gets sad when they don't make it. <laughs> That's true. It's even sadder. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, so we're back here to, um, by September, the gardener admitted, Big Tuna and the gang aren't doing too well. Deer ate the squash. She realized onions were best planted in winter. A rare survivor was the hardy jalapeno. A cruel twist because no one in the family likes spicy food. That's vicious. That's also Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Too spicy. <laughs> the family plans to try again in the spring. It's not quite defeat garden. It's an I learned something garden. Exactly. That's what this whole podcast that is about. That's exactly what this podcast is about. Because, my gosh, I have learned so many things uh, from you, Christy, from our listeners that write stuff in. From trial and error. From trial and error. That didn't work there. Let's try it over here. From forcing myself to do research. From writing to seed companies and asking them questions. They don't mind that. They, in fact, love that, as it turns out. And it also reminds me of our theater roots. Because in theater, it's not if something goes wrong, it's when something goes different than planned. Yeah. And then what do you do? You improvise. Yes. You, you keep, keep going. your knees bent. You got to stay on your toes. Mm -hmm. You got to be open for the possibilities. Yep. Mistakes. Um, you, 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 learn, you learn from them. You do. And also the community that it's creating. I mean, we, got a, we got an email, didn't we, from Denver Urban Gardeners? Yes, we did. Yes. Denver Urban Gardens, also known as Doug, has a program called Grow a Garden. It's an annual food access program which reduces barriers to growing food at home or in a Doug community garden by connecting individuals, families, and communities to grow seeds, seedlings, and education. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool about it this year is that this January, it used to be just for income qualifying program folks. But this year, it has been expanded to be accessible to all individuals, families, oh, and community groups alike. I didn't who, know that. And they're going to have a sliding scale, pay what you can model. Now, I'm not ashamed to admit that I was one of those income people that was able to use it. It's fantastic. And look in your own area because there mm -hmm. probably there could be a program that's just like that too to take advantage of. Yep. And the... If you want to participate in the Denver Urban Gardens, you need to go to their website and sign up for it. The deadline, I think, is sometime in January. Uh huh. And then in March, your seeds will be ready because they give you seeds. I picked them up a half a block from my house at the library. And then in, I think, May, you get your seedlings and you get to pick what you want. Oh, that's amazing. It's just amazing. It's wonderful. And the other gardeners that you meet there, it's a really wonderful program. Check and see if you're not from Denver 
if you have that kind of thing in your area. And let us know about it. We please, want to hear about please. it so we can we yeah. can spread the word about it. Yeah. Uh, please send us also your favorite gardening stories. What were your favorite mistakes of 2020 or your favorite victories? What are your plans for your 2021 garden or your garden questions? We really love hearing from you. Please write to us at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Now it's time for an inspirational quote. This is from Josephine Neuys, who is the author of The Country Garden. Thought it would be good to have as we look into 2021. Anyone who thinks gardening begins in the spring and ends in the fall is missing the best part of the whole year. For gardening begins in January with the dream. Oh, she's so right. Thank you for that, Christy. Thank you. And thank you who've been listening, subscribing, communicating with us. Thank you so much. You made our year. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. If you enjoy Upside Down Tulips, please give us a five star rating and review on Apple Tunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. And if you would like to hear more of Denise's music, Go to denisegentilini.com or you can find a handy link on our website. Don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Hey, Edith, what did the cat say on New Year's Eve? I don't know. Meow. (laughs) Upside down to live.